Second John, what I believe is our forty-first lesson. We are on, have been on verse eight. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And we gotta go back and get the video or the audio. And we've been talking about the judgment seat of Christ, and now we're on the reward. There are five crowns, and we're on number four today. We are on the crown of life. Now, the crown of life has two points. Number one, a martyr, and number two, enduring temptation. Dying for the Lord Jesus Christ in a righteous way. Because anybody can die in Christ. And you can die in Christ stupid. You can be a martyr for Christ in the Bible when you didn't have to be. An enduring temptation. And the question is, were you faithful in trials, mockings, and even unto death? All they that live, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Did you endure? Now, I'm not talking about those little moments that you may have, All right, I've had, I've given up, I quit. The question is, did you go on? Did you get up and keep on walking? If someone, we talk about the last crown, the, the incorruptible crown, and running a race. And in the Bible, and in the eyes of God, you don't have to be first in a marathon race. But you do got to cross the finish line. And if you fell down in the race, did you get back up? If you couldn't run, did you walk? Did you crawl if you couldn't walk? It's all about finishing. Matthew 5.11 And these crowns are there for our one. You gotta want and desire your life to be Christ-like. And it's hard. Because you won't believe what Satan will throw at you. You won't believe what your flesh will throw at you. You won't believe what family and friends will throw at you. Even Christians. 511, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and it scorn you verbally and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake now if they're making names of you if they're call when we went to the farmers market the other day I haven't even started yet I already started throwing things when I turn the, the amplifier on and open unzipping my Bible they're already throwing things because they know why I'm there. Now, when your boss says that guy is a lazy, no good, oh, I'm being persecuted, and you are lazy, no good. Oh, I'm reading my Bible on company time, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. When your character 
is lousy. And you're being uh, bashed for it. That's who you are. But listen, if you've got a good character and, and you're trying to do right and trying to do and you're trying to serve the Lord and you're doing your job and you're raising your family and then for what your service you do for God. Let's read the verse again. Blessed are ye when men should revile you, scorn you verbally and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. That's the key. That's one of the keys in this verse. They are ruining your reputation, your name, because of what you are doing right. And then it says, for my sake, Jesus' sake, he said. Because you are a Christian and you are trying to live that Christian life by the Bible. That's a trial, mocking, and rebound to death. Verse 44. Verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. If you're walking for Christ, if you're walking the Bible way, you're trying to do what God wants you to do. You're, you're trying to be the Christian. You're trying to be the, the churchgoer. You're trying to be the witness. You're trying to be the husband. You're trying to be the mother. And people are trying to stop you. People don't want you to live right. And they say and will do things to try to hurt you, to try to stop you, to try to get you to sin. Try to get you upset, to blow your top. And you don't. And you don't give in. And you continue. Crown of life. And then sometimes in our life, we have the losses. We will give in to the temptation. We will get angry and blow our cool. But this crown results on our character. Of who we really are. And where our, I can never stand standing in state, but our condition is we are in Christ. What is your life? What is your walk? Are you someone that can say, That they, you don't, they don't want you around. They don't like your conduct. You're too goody-goody. You don't do all the things everybody else does. Persecution. Matthew 23, 34. And not everybody is going to have the same life of this crown. You realize you could have somebody 23, 34. You know their temptation may be anything what is not your temptation. When Satan looks at my life He's not going to use beer. 
he might use beer for you, but he may he's not going to use beer for me. That's not going to get me to turn on God. Man, I, I, I mean, if I smell it, the stuff smells like urine to me. But there are some sins, and I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I mean, to someone who, who, who it's a cheesecake. Beer, I mean, in the realms of food would be the, the, the sushi. Yeah. I know you like fish. Yeah. But then there's some sins out there. It would be cheesecake and ice cream. Ooh. And those would be the ones that Satan will use in my life and will tempt me and get me to, to go off the way to serve God. Or from serving God. Do I get the spoon or the fork and, and give in? Or do I say, no, just the good food? Because, I mean, nutrition wise, cheesecake and ice cream not, don't do nutrition you value. And if I want to have a life that with the proper ingredients and the proper nutrition and the proper sugar and the proper everything of, of the ingredients that God wants in my life. When he reads my title clear, my label, before the judgment seat of Christ, it better have everything that the percentage value of what, what God wanted for me for a daily life. And when you look at ice cream and cheesecake, there is no vitamins. There is no minerals. There's no percentage of values that I need for a daily growth. It really should have nothing to do with my life. Now, in uh, Matthew 23, 34, and this is not going as well as I thought it would be going. Wherefore, behold, I... Send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill. There's the martyr's crown. God has sent you out. Fox's Book of Mars records many and all people who will receive the crown of life in the name of Christ. There are people today in 2015 who are dying for the word of God in a foreign country under religions and they are earning the crown of life for ye shall kill and crucify. Dying for the word of God and for Jesus Christ is the crown of life. You got to do it. Remember what we said? You got to not foolishly. For Christ. And some of them shall ye scourge. And let me look my note here. Let me show too. Paul was scourge. The whipping. in your synagogues in the place where they meet and worship they were scourged and persecute James or Peter Stephen was killed Paul was, was scourged and James and Peter were persecuted and James was beheaded later Peter was put into prison. Paul was in prison for the word of God. Study the lives of those men. And you'll see the persecution. And you will see how righteously to earn the crown of life. Their lives and their conduct. They didn't ask for it. But they got it. From city to city. This is an endurance crown. 
This is not an easy crown. Because it will involve both physical and mental pain. Satan may pull all out against and you don't know what he'll do. After Adam and Eve got the curse and the pain rebelling against God in the garden, the very next chapter Satan's tool against Adam and Eve was one quarter of the population was killed. There was only four people. One was killed. And one quarter of the population was a murderer. In the very next chapter, their son killed their son. One became dead and the other one became a vagabond. Man, you got to know that hurt Adam. That was the first death, and it was murder. The first parents to suffer of a dead loved one. And the death was by the other loved one. And Satan may pull that out on you. You may lose jobs. You may lose positions. You may lose your family. Don't lose your character. Don't lose who you are. Luke 21.12 Jesus Christ was born knowing exactly what everything would be held that last 24 hours the beating, the spinning, the hair pulling, the nails being driven into his body. And he still went to the cross. He laid down his life knowing what was going to happen. We don't know. You don't know. You've got to say no to the flesh and no to Satan. I'm going to throw both in there. Luke 21.12 but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, and delivering you up to the synagogues, into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. That was the book of Acts. Because of Jesus Christ, your life may be persecuted. It may be death. It may be ridiculed. It may be uh, uh, being uh, uh, whipped. It may be blood, sweat, and tears. And the righteous God for your suffering will give you a crown of life. John 15, 20. Then it's going to let the scriptures just talk for themselves. Uh, John fifteen twenty. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, Jesus... They will also persecute you. 
Persecution comes with living right and living for God. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You better think about that. When you say, I'm going to stand out and live for Christ. When you put that armor on, you don't take it off. There's no sleeping. You got to go on. You got to get over it. John 16, 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that they whosoever killeth you will think he has done God's doeth God's service. Put you out of the synagogue. Well, how big deal is that? You know what? If a Jew trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior, to a Jewish family and Jewish nation, you are a, you're dead. You don't come home to the house no more. You, you're a heathen. You're an outcast. You don't do business with Jews no more. You're isolated. You're, you're done with. You're not part of the body of the Jews no more. To be put out of the synagogue in this time the Bible was written, that was it. Your life was done. Did you ever suffer and bear it? Read the entire life of Paul. Now don't go out and run out and commit spiritual suicide and I, and I died for Christ. No, you die as a fool dieth, Abner. Read Fox's Book of Moderate. It carries with men and women and Christians that will wear the crown of life. James 1.12 James 1.12 Blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to him that love him. How do you get over temptation? How do you get this crown? You love the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a sinner. I've sinned. But I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to do right. And this flesh steps in. Satan steps in. And so many times I fail. I fall. And I ought not to. But when I don't give in to those temptations. And I say no. No. Because I love the Lord. See, if I love the Lord, I ain't going to go out there and do something stupid for him. I'm going to go out there and do exactly what he wants me to do. And if the consequences is death, all right. Now, recently we had in Missouri, we had, we had what is right or wrong, I'm just giving this as an illustration, but you had riots. And there's no that, that that police officer that shot. I don't even remember what it was, but you had riots, okay? Now here's a stupid example. In those riots, they're burning things, and, and there was reports of shots being fired and stuff like that, and whatever. I'm gonna go on a street corner and I'm gonna preach Jesus Christ among these riots. And if, if you get hit 
with a brick in your head and die, you're not going to get the crown of life or being a martyr because you were in the wrong place at the wrong time that you shouldn't have been there. That's not the time and that's not the point. Okay? I'm trying to think of some other little points that can be. I mean, oh, I'm going to have a street ministry, and you stand in the middle of the street with a sign that says Jesus saves, and you get hit by a bus and die, you're not going to get the crown of life. Now, another one. You're arrested and you're put in jail. And you were standing where the law says you were not to be standing. Because it's private property. Don't think because you went to prison you're going to get the crown of life. Oh, look, we're uh, suffer persecution. No. I know of a church when, when we had we had a street ministry. We were on the public sidewalk. We knew we checked with what the laws were and how to do it and what to be and where not to be. When we were at the courthouse, we were told to leave the property. I went and checked and, and found out that, yes, being on, on the state courthouse, that's not public property. We had no business being there, so we did not go back. Now, no, talking to lawyers and talking to a, a Christian law uh, uh, association and find out we don't belong there. And if we went back to that spot and say, I don't care what the law says, and stand there against the law, where we have anywhere else to be, and we get arrested by the marshals, we're not going to get the crown of life for, for being persecuted. We're going to get a stupid badge. Now, it may come down in America where you won't be able to preach anywhere. Okay, that's a different situation. But right now, when, that, when we were told to leave the courthouse, we went somewhere where it was legal to be. Just as much as open and just as much as, as people to reach than where we were. Matter of fact, the Lord moved us to a better spot. And we didn't get no handcuffs and we didn't get no police report. And we didn't get anything like that. Whereas another church went to this particular spot, it was open, and, and, and come to find out that this spot was a public, no, excuse me, this spot was a privately owned spot. They didn't check with the law, they didn't check with the city, and they were arrested. And they were wrong. They will not get the crown of life. They can oh, we were persecuted for Jesus. No, you were persecuted because you broke the law. Now, when we stand on the public sidewalk, when we go down to the farmer's market and people throw radishes at us, they get in my face and tell me, get out of here. With the last video, check it out. Then you get another guy standing over there preaching about green eggs and hams or whatever nonsense. And people tell us, you know, you ought not to be here. Why are you scared? That's a crown of life. And I feel there's going to be a lot more persecution. But I'm going to stand there because I want people to hear the gospel. I want people to hear about the saving grace and the blood of atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. To realize that there's a death and there's a hell and... There's a way to escape hell by the blood of the Lord Jesus. I want them to know the gospel. We are in a legally, publicly spot. Now, when we first started that ministry, we, w we went walking through the booths and all that, passing out gospel tracts, and we found out that, yes, the place is, is, is rented. It's not under the city. It's under the organization of, of the farmer's market. And we have no business to do what we were doing. So we stopped that. And we found out what we can do. Now we could have fought it. Oh, 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 wasted money. And they all oh, fight them and lost. And so you got to do what's proper.
We are under grace right now. Now, in the, in the book of Acts, they went right into the synagogues and all that. That's where the Jews gathered. That's not our commission. We're not commissioned to go into a, a, a Catholic church and upset the mass and be carried off by the cops, by the Catholics arresting us. We were on their property. And in America, the property belongs to them and it's not public property. If you don't belong there, you don't belong there. But the sidewalk that's in front of the Catholic Church, as they're coming out or going into the Mass, okay, there you go. There's your signs in preaching. See, it's wrong to say, oh, uh, I'm in, I, what happened to you? I was inside the, 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 the Mormon temple and, 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 and they had me arrested, crown of life. No. What happened? I was standing outside the Mormon tabernacle on the street there, on the sidewalk, and they had me arrested. And Okay. The street sidewalk is proper. Well, I was arrested because, you know, I was talking to this guy on the sidewalk, the street ministry. I had a Bible open with, with him. I was trying to show him the way of Christ, and he said I hit him, and, and uh, you know, I abused him and stuff like that. And all I did was tell him he was going to hell, and the Bible could save him. And he got upset. He called the cop over, and he had me false arrest. I never laid a hand on him, and I just, you know, just showed him the Bible, talking to him. That's persecution. All right, what happened? Well, I had the Bible open at this place over here. I, I, I was showing him with the Word of God, and he told me that Jesus Christ was blah, 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 and God and the Bible were made by men. He, I got, he got me really upset, so I punched him in the face. And then you wonder why you were arrested. And the cop looks at the person, uh, and, he's, and he sees this big black eye by your fist. Well, that's not enduring temptation. There's no persecution there. You persecuted him. Trying to show you the rights and the wrongs here. There are many people I believe in the lives to see in church age, oh, I'm going to get a crown of life. And they're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, God, give it to me. For what? Okay. And they're going to be found to be foolish. They did it not for the love of God. They lived, They did see the love of the flesh. Well, look at me. I'm being. Look at what's happening to me. I'm being persecuted. No, 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 no. You can't do the ministry in the flesh and expect God to reward you. You can't go out and be a Christian thinking, hey, some, what can I do to be persecuted? To? No, you can't. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to do something to upset my boss and I'll be persecuted. No. You go to work and you do something above and, uh, and, and, and highly standard of what is, what is expected of you and and other co-workers hate you because you're there on time because you do the job and you're dependable but Sam gets the promotion because whatever Sam gets the promotion from but you, you're not, I ain't gonna give him the promotion because that guy reads his Bible that guy has a good life he has a good fan I ain't having that guy next to my office I'd rather have Sam who drinks and his life messed up and compared to my life and Sam's life, my life looks better than Sam. So then you didn't get the promotion because you live right. There's the crown of life. You know what I mean? The crown of life comes by loving God 
loving to do right, and suffering for it. You can be, listen, I, I was in a church, and we were being persecuted because of the bumper stickers on the car, because of the street ministry we have. That's not the way to do it. And, and they don't do nothing themselves. Now, I don't have the bumper stickers on my car so Christians can say, oh, no, I don't want a car to be a witness, to be a testimony. And when I'm not around my car, people, we, we, my wife being in the hospital, we can see the car in the parking lot, and we can watch people walk around the car and read the car, and they got in their heart the gospel. Or maybe a Christian walks around the car, and maybe we put into their life, hey, I want to do that too. We've had many people come up to you, where did you get them? And they write down the name, they write down the web address, and I wonder today, hey, if they got at least one bumper sticker, maybe two. Amen. Salvation and growth of the Christian. One more place. Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Don't let fear be your guide. Fear the Lord. Understanding, wisdom, knowledge, you'll get from that. Fear the Lord will, will get you knowledge of the whole. And then you won't do stupid things. You fear the Lord and your suffering will come by an act or by what you're doing. And not because of what you're doing. What I mean by because of what you're doing. You're not doing it to be suffering. You're just doing it because God told you to do. And the result thereof is suffering. Behold the devil shall cast some of you in prison. Prison is a mark for the crown of life. If you've done it for the Lord. Well you're a Christian. What are you in jail for? I was selling marijuana and crack. That's the time to say, don't, don't say you're a Christian, please. Don't say nothing. You know? Prison. That ye may be tried. Will prison make you stop? Will going to jail make you stop being a Christian? If you stop, there's no crown of life. Fed up and done with living the life that's suffering. And going back like Demas did. There is no crown of life. Had Demas continued with Paul, Demas would have a crown of life because Paul's whole life was suffering. I can imagine Demas. You still with that Paul? The goody goody too, Paul? Huh? What's wrong with us? Why don't you stay with us? All he does is preach Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You a Pauline? You a follower of Paul Demons? He goody goody too you? You go up to the to the synagogue with Paul and preach about that Jesus? Huh? Paul Demas? This is the Roman law. You're under arrest. Paul went to the jail. Demas went because he loved the world. Being the sufferer and the persecution, you see Satan, and the other one is the flesh. You cannot live as a sodomite and be saved and earn the crown of life because sodomy is a sin. You can't be saved and be a liar and earn the crown of life because lying is a sin and the temptation is not to lie for the reward. To do right. If you were a thief, to get the crown of life is to stop stealing and get a job and earn a proper living you have resisted the temptation to do the sin. There's the crown of life. Not to sin. Not to be tempted into going somewhere 
that you're not supposed to go. Ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Crown of life, remember gold, silver, precious stones, is gold. When all the works are tried, it will be what remains through the fire. Stupidity and foolishness burns up. That's ash. But the love of God, and to do right, and to continue to do right, that no matter what man or you or Satan does, If you continue on the right path, you're on the right. One more crown to go. We'll stop there.